It's That's about Marine, right. right? Yeah. That's right. How do you like these leather chairs? I feel a little strange. Yep. Like I'm kind of teetering. That's right. That's okay. <laughs> well, good afternoon. I'm Craig Huffines, Executive Vice President of uh, the American Quarter Horse Association. And uh, Ben Bishop's with me. Ben's... Uh, hey, everybody. Ben Bishop, as Craig said, I'm the digital marketing manager from Base 22, uh, and we're one of the main technology partners that's gotten to walk alongside AQHA through this really exciting, transformative uh, period of time. So we're going to talk a little bit to to this afternoon about the transformation that's going on uh, at the offices out of Amarillo, and uh, this has been a conversation piece for a number of years, um, beginning seven or eight years ago with the development of a new computer platform. Uh, we've been talking about the computer for years and years and years. Actually, this past weekend, the computer launched. So we were hooked up to Mission Control, and we actually kicked off a major database conversion, and uh, it's been glitchy this week, but, but it's in the air. And you know what? That's to be expected every time, but it's also exciting because it's this new chapter that's unfolding. And for the first time, people are getting to see the, the new technology, the transformative things that can take place. We see it in Amazon, Google, Facebook. You're seeing all these yeah. technologies being used constantly. And it's nice when something that you need to rely on for, for your favorite industry, for your association, also catches up and is playing the same game. Uh, so it's some really exciting stuff taking place. A lot of, lot of exciting things, and it's not gone without a little pain point. As is to be expected, uh, absolutely. So that's the first thing that I want to do, hat in hand here, apologies <laughs> for those who've been backed up and haven't gotten their registration turned around very quickly here in the last 90 to 120 days. It's been heavy lifting in Amarillo. Part of that has been because most of our staff has been testing this new system uh, for eight, nine hours in the day and working only one or two other hours getting your work through. So that's kind of been a traffic jam, so to speak, while we're under construction. And we'll certainly talk more about how this new system alleviates some of the um, issues, problems, uh, processes that the on the ground quarter horse employees have to deal with every day and how that's going to in turn benefit the membership, which I think is probably the most exciting thing here because at the end of the day, this is member benefit. Uh, and that's kind of the whole goal of this. It's you folks out here in the audience. Yeah, Ben, I think uh, what we don't realize, you know, we, we all have passion for the horse. Um, but that passion for the horse really makes AQHA a data company. That's right. I mean, that's going exactly back to right. our origin in 1941, you know, data started on the back of index cards mm -hmm. where we registered these horses and we tracked the pedigree and these ranchers would, would trade notes on that's the right. breeding of these horses. That has become a major, major advancement when you think about the number of competitions we have any given year. Just at AQHA alone, nearly a million entries right. at 300 approved events. And that's not including our alliance partners and affiliates. I mean, we, are, we just transferred a half of a billion mm -hmm. records over the weekend. And it's such a big thing when you put it in terms of data silos, and I'll get a little nerdy for a second, but when you've got technology that's dated to a specific generation, you're gonna have data for that generation. Part of this has been bringing all this stuff into one concurrent system where things can speak to each other where they couldn't have before, um, and really some cutting edge data technologies that it's gonna really inform the future. Uh, it's honestly transformative. It is. So in the last couple of years, we've had focus groups, and we've brought them into this meeting. Yep. The last couple of years, we've had them offsite, um, we've asked the members what the needs are, what the pain points are, and so we've had some interesting comments. Um, yeah, I see a good one here from uh, Dr. Jim Hurd. He said, we shouldn't ever have to ask members to send in paper. Uh, and apparently paper's a big problem, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to get to it in a minute, but envelopes are a problem? Is envelopes that a thing? Envelopes are a problem. Okay, nobody likes envelopes, got it. Uh, so that's something we want to solve, something we want to fix. That's right. Ben Hudson, where's he? I saw him outside. Is he here? Ben Hudson sat on one of our website focus groups two years ago, and he said, uh, I am a pedigree freak. And if you know Ben, he is a pedigree freak when it comes to racehorses. Very important to him. Wants more data on the website. Today it's difficult to find information. And that's a data-driven business. we got to fix that problem. got to fix it. I was uh, looking here at this one comment. It was related to the International Committee, uh, and they said more business needs to be available electronically. Uh, we want to be able to be involved in improvements, uh, and there's pain points like snail mail. The fact that we have folks in the international community relying on snail mail, uh, it, it's criminal. It's very frustrating, and, and obviously it's a big pain point we want to solve. It is. Dr. Morrison and her team in the International Department did a study this past year, 
and found that only 25% of the mail that we send interna internationally arrives. So that's a problem. It's a cost problem. It's an oh. efficiency problem. It's a lot of problems that need to be solved. That's right. That's right. If you look at uh, a member focus group uh, from two years ago, problem with registration and no way to see status of pending registrations. AQHA.com homepage is cluttered and a mess. So we recognize that there's a lot of reasons that will hold up a registration. You didn't get your signature done right. We've got the wrong name. Maybe we, we picked the name that was already taken. We don't have a birth date. Um, we don't have transfer on the dam in the right hands. There's just a list of a dozen or so reasons why a fold does not get registered. It goes into a pending file. The old way is if we print off a letter, it goes out, we're waiting for your response via snail mail. And that, that presents in itself a lot of barriers to success. So how can we remove those? Um, the last comment we've got here is from Doug Brown. Um, and he said, what could have been accomplished with a couple of clicks online has now taken three phone calls, interaction with five employees, and ended up with me needing to deal with hard copy forms and faxes, assuming he, he could even get to a computer. Uh, I think I like this comment the most because we've solved all of these problems. <laughs> and we that, have. That's exciting. We are. We're so going to talk about that. We're talking about transformative stuff. So let me get this clicker here so we can start to kind of skip through. We wanted to talk about some of the other polling questions that we went through, not just some of the things um, that, that we heard individually. Uh, so let's see here. The first one was rank the top three areas where transformational change is most needed uh, within the industry. And the way we use technology to become more efficient was really this standout that, that meant a lot to us. Uh, and the way we work with entities and organizations, these are so well tied together. Uh, but I can say that this was something that everybody kind of took to heart in terms of, of, of listening and wanting to understand. And I, I also want to mention that as we go through these, the polling questions, the individual uh, statements we got from people, that's not the only user interaction that took place. Um, and it's something that Base22 kind of takes to heart with all our ethos and the, the way that we operate. So the next one here was, what do you perceive to be the biggest benefit to transformational changes implemented by AQHA? Um, member service improvement and a more efficient, profitable organization. organization. Um, and of course, these are extremely important areas that we need to figure out. Uh, and so I will say that one of our big highlights today is talking about the focus of the member service and this efficiency uh, and, and profitability of the organization as itself. And our, um, well, I'll back up a little bit because I think there's one more, Craig, that we wanted to go over. Um, yeah, so what do you see as, oh, all our notes are here. You know what? Let's skip through. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's skip through. So with digital transformation, um, there's a lot of uh, components that Base22 espouses and believes are important uh, to any engagement that we enter into. Uh, and we've been around for about 20 years dealing with a myriad of other companies, and we were so excited to be brought along um, AQHA to really explore what digital transformation means to uh, AQHA and this industry as a whole. Uh, and I'll say that a lot of our team members have gotten very excited about the equine industry, and we've learned a lot. Um, every time I go to the website to take a look at something new or, or even testing features uh, that's on the currently deployed website, I'm learning something new, and I'm finding that um, we're really on this path of transformation and, and moving towards a brighter future. So with that being said, there's really three uh, components here of digital transformation that we wanted to talk about. Um, and Craig, I'm going to go through these a little bit yep. from our kind of higher level view. And then if you don't mind going through some of the practical sides Absolutely. of these types of things. So whenever Base22 goes in, we say, what does digital transformation look like for this organization? And we like to break it down in terms of what means the most to the end user, the member. Uh, and for us, it's digital transformation uh, for members means they benefit because they can interact with and access the right information and insights easier, and it translates to more efficiency for everyone. So in this application, it's technology anywhere, anytime. It could be your iPhone, it could be your computer, it could be uh, the call service now that it's been improved and bolstered. Um, but the idea is that it's technology ad hoc or it's for this purpose, meaning that we've designed it specifically to interact with all the members where they are, where they need it, uh, and we don't want to let anybody down in that regard. Another uh, tenet for us is the on-demand aspect. The ability to get the information you need when you need it every time, the right time. You've got on-demand on your cable box. Well, why don't you have on-demand for the forms you need for the records that you need to work on or, or what have you? We need to improve those efficiencies uh, and, and make them work better for everyone involved. 
So um, the last tenet of digital transformation as we see it is, is in real time or real time data. Um, let's look at it like this. Everybody here probably has a Facebook account or some form of email account. Pretend you could only get that refreshed once a day. Um, most people check their Facebook probably 20 to 40 times a day, uh, and so it's become a bit of a reliance. What if you could only download the information once every night? It would be useless. You wouldn't want to interact with people, and you wouldn't really care to talk to them. So think of this real-time data aspect as, as Facebook for your data related to AQHA. We're trying to bring tangible, real-time insights into your phone, into your computer, into your life uh, that really means something to you. Uh, and I, I think that's kind of what's really exciting about this, is digital transformation encompasses so many different avenues uh, of the technological sphere, and as, as AQHA bolsters and continues climbing uh, the technology tree, there's just a lot of benefit to be had. So let's take a poll. How many of you would prefer to use your phone to look up your level, if you're an exhibitor? A level, say a level. Doc, are you an exhibitor? Yeah, novice. So, no, just kidding, Doc. No, some of you will use your computer. How many will use your, your, lap, your uh, desktop? Okay. Um, how many of you would prefer just to call in and get an answer? Oh, God bless you. Yes. We have technology folks in the room. That's the response there we There we go. So, <laughs> so here's what we're talking about. Ad hoc, you can use your phone, you can use your computer on your desktop, or you can call in. And it's seamless. Everything it's is seamless. the same experience. So... One of the main calls we get into our offices each and every week is, okay, what's my level? Am I a level, you know, have I moved up from level one to level two? I hear, I see some, some head nodding. I'm not a three yet. I know I'm not a three, but my horse might be a three. Um, and, I, and I am totally confused at how we calculate these things. I'm not real sure how that, how that happens. All I know is I need to know where I need to enter. And I, and I see some head, folks out there nodding. Well, listen. When you now sign in on the new website, whether it's on your handheld or whether it's on you know, your desktop, you can go to the, your, your personalized information and it's going to have for you what your level is. And it's going to be updated in real time. How many of you are constantly looking at, okay, where are my points? How far am I from quali for qualifying this horse? We have some exhibitors that, that, uh, that are constantly wanting to know where we are. Um, well. Again, on your phone, uh, on your desktop, you can go into your personalized data feed and you're gonna be able to drop down your horses, perhaps multiple horses, and you're gonna find out in which class and what points they have within that class. And then over time, you'll be able to see, okay, I might need to take this horse to this show or this show because this is how many points they earned out of that class last year. It'll, it'll allow you to begin to plan that horse's career uh, throughout that year. So, so that's just some basic examples for exhibitors yep. that they're going to be able to get right now today this week with the launch of the new website. Absolutely. There's a lot of really tangible benefits for, for these different components and launching them in this way is kind of fun because everybody gets to see some of the pain points, some of the problems that have actually had, but just know there's a, there's a team of folks that are constantly working. So anytime you provide feedback, if you're on Facebook and say, hey, this is broken, we're going to fix it. I've got a, a lot of folks working on that right now. So another example, how many folks are going to register a foal this year? I have several hands going up. So what are some of the key problems that would hold up uh, a registration from going through um, and, and getting complete and mailed back to you? One would be payment, right? We're an association that requires payment before the release of work, right? We don't want to, we don't want to go in the collection business, so we require people to put a credit card in or, or pay us. So today on the new site, Invoices are generated, and in your personalized data field, you're going to be able to go to your invoices, and the invoices will be stored over time. You can pay those invoices online. It'll have a balance for you. Just going to have to enter your, your credit card. Boom, release. In addition, what's another reason why a foal might get uh, held up for registry? Didn't get a signature. A lot of people forget to sign. Other reasons? Barbara, you register a few. The name's wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't reserve a name or th that, that name's already taken. It goes into a pending file. You're waiting at the mailbox to find out did it get registered or not or why did it not get registered. Okay, so now that pending file will be in your personalized dashboard where you can go in and say, all right, where are the problems? Can I fix those problems with an email? And guess what? Yes, we can fix those problems with an email. Boom, we release. 
in the future, we're even looking at a digital certificate. And I think for the folks internationally, we'll start there mm -hmm. because they're not going to want to wait. That's right. For the Postal Service to deliver that across the moat or to Latin America, they'll be able to download that registration certificate well, online. Honestly, there's a lot of exciting things for the international community that I know we're going to kind of get to here in a few minutes. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Well, without really um, doubling or tripling down on, on our tenants here of member experience that we wanted to walk through, let's kind of dive deep into what these big projects have been and some of the benefits that you'll actually see, the tangible things. Um, and, and as we've talked through digital transformation, we've mentioned how these insights and the real-time data, that those kinds of things plug and play. You're going to feel those currents flowing constantly through pretty much everything we discuss uh, because there is this sense of digital transformation urgency within every single project and um, so really the first one we want to talk about is the new website uh, there's a bit of a buzz there's um, uh, a lot happening there right now there's been broken moments at just as as recently as yesterday to my knowledge but the website itself represents a big technological shift. Um, and the big things that we were trying to accomplish was focusing on the user, and, and that's you all here in the audience today. Um, and so we thought, what are the things that could benefit them most? We asked in polling questions, we asked in interviews, we also asked in user experience evaluations of various kinds, um, and that kind of informed the whole process. One of the big complaints was um, finding what you need to find, or as we like to call it, findability. Uh, and so that's one of the big areas of focus. If you were to go on there right now, and I actually did this the other day because I was just curious how intensive our, our search function was, but I went and searched the word testing. And not being very familiar with the equine industry, I was fascinated by how many topics were related to testing, whether it was racing or showing or DNA testing or hair testing. I, I couldn't believe there was so many different articles. And it made me think of one thing, which is Wikipedia. All of a sudden, you've got an American Quarter Horse Association Wikipedia built right into your website, and for the first time, it's actually findable. You can get anything you want to see there uh, if you just type in a few different keywords. It's categorized efficiently so it'll make sense for each person's mindset or what you're, what you're considering. So the other side of this, of course, is navigation itself. These topics are all categorized as well. So you can really go through the navigation and find these different things, and you don't have to search for it if you're not sure what you're looking for, but you can go topic-wise and kind of figure those things out. The last major component, and you mentioned this a little bit, but the site has now been translated into six languages, or the navigation has. And this is that idea that we need to make sure we're being inclusive of everybody that's, with, that's a part of this organization, that's a part of this whole experience. Uh, and we want them to feel included. So just like we'll roll out features to the international community first, and that's purely out of convenience and, and honestly saving money, um, we'll also try to do more things like that. And, and there's talk of more languages down the line uh, and adopting more technologies to make sure that we're reaching the right people where they need to be met. Um, at Base 22, we practice the design thinking approach. We focus on the user. At the end of the day, if the user's not happy, we shouldn't be happy and we shouldn't stop until we get it right. Uh, I was excited by the user experience evaluations. That's actually my past. I, I kind of cut my teeth in marketing in the user experience world. Um, and so I've seen these real life tangible moments where you say, ask a user to follow a path. How do they find out stuff about testing? What would they do? Uh, how can we make that a more efficient process for them? So it's fun because we have this design thinking approach and we can put the user experience first. So when you see this new website and you're thinking, oh, well, this doesn't work or that doesn't work, it's tested by a lot of folks that really want to and we want to continue to do that. So it's kind of a living, breathing thing that will continue to evolve as, as more people maybe have things they want to say about it. Um, so Craig, it's a big milestone. What do it you is. want to say about the website? <laughs> well, I, I think I, I'm very proud of it and, yeah. and it, it's for the reason you said. I mean, I think this was the first time that AQHA actually asked the members what they wanted. And everybody's going to have a different opinion, but we had a wonderful cross-section of people that were heavy users of the website. We understood what their pain points were, their frustrations, and we began to design it accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about this new website is that it almost customizes itself on the fly yeah. because it's tracking each and every one of your uh, paid page views. There's cookies attached to that, and it will adjust to your needs. So if you're interested in registrations more frequently than anything else or racing, it's going to pop those things up first for you. It's almost like what Amazon does to try to sell you It's anything, exactly what they do. Right? Yeah. It, it's kind of called a retargeting technology, but we're using it internally. Um, and as we talk about 4.0 here in a minute, we'll kind of learn more about that. But it's this 
really great technology that allows you, as somebody who's opted into this process, to not have to worry about the stuff you don't care about, but rather you can focus on what's most important. Um, we also, in Base22, work on employee portals, so this is a membership portal. It's, it's a kind of a different thing, and that's really a standalone place where a person that needs the information can find the information, whether it's you know the employee portal at Pepsi or UPS or whatever. You've got a lot of people that have a lot of different questions. Um, that is no different at AQHA, and it's been a little bit more fun because, honestly, the, the subject matter is more interesting. Um, so we've had a lot of fun with that. Absolutely. So let's see here. Our, um, I think um, what's exciting about Ford Auto is it is this kind of spinal cord that, that works behind the scenes. And we've talked about it a little bit, but it's going to mean bringing the data to the forefront so that the association itself can be more efficient, more effective, and, and more fluid, um, where employees won't have to worry about uh, process or getting held up in something but they'll have more information at their fingertips about you. So if you do have to call in, for instance, they're gonna know more immediately. They're gonna have that information that they need up front. Um, the, so big, the big difference between this new database, 4.0, and the previous old technology that goes back to the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, um, Chester in, business, in the business world, uh, we use these flat files that didn't talk to each other, and today you hear these uh, databases that are relational, and so, we have about 700 files now that have been reconfigured and they all talk to each other. And so our people in the office now can do quick queries. Um, you are gonna be able to do quick queries when you get on the website because that database is backing up all of your information and live feeding it. And it's things like paying invoices. I mean, this is a reporting feature that's going to be baked in, but where in the past this information was not connected, it's now directly piped in there, so you're going to get all those different things right there. And then also the pending correspondence, which will be a big deal. If you've been working on a customer care issue and you just want to know what's going on, uh, you're going to have a place to do that so that you're not constantly hoping an envelope shows up or another email, but it's just going to be here waiting for you. So in the last 90 days, our call center has just been backed up with phone calls of people asking where my work is. Mm. Um, and, and I explained why, you know, we've been using all of our people to test the system and not get the work pushed through. So they're, they're anxiously waiting to get a horse registered so they can enter it in the, the upcoming races or the upcoming shows or what have you. So we just have this huge flood of phone calls. This right here can alleviate that because you'll be able to go in, find out where it is, where it's stuck and how do we get it released. Yeah. And, and really one of the important parts about that with the enhanced customer care is alleviating the workload so that folks can focus on more important things. Um, and as we talk about customer care, you'll have to remind me some of these statistics, mm -hmm. but the amount of calls that come through the through the call center, it's, it's pretty astronomical. And when you think about the amount of people handling them, it's even sure. more mind baffling. Let's give them a number. Okay. Last year, in 2018, we had over 450,000 phone calls come through the office. Now we have about 27 call center reps, okay? So if you can imagine, the Monday before Labor Day during the select show, that's one of the busiest days of the year, we had 2,400 phone calls. So you can imagine, you're, you're sitting there getting in a hold queue and you're waiting for somebody to answer the phone. You just can't get to all of them. Yeah. And so part of this whole technology scheme is to self-serve so that you don't have to, and there's the phone call. Oh, that's right. There you go, right there. So if you look at them week by week, look at the number of calls that are held in queue mm -hmm. at any given part of the day. And the busiest time of the day is between 10 and 2. For anybody who wants to get in, call at 4.45 in the afternoon. I can just about promise you can get in. Problem 10 solved. To, 10 to That's 2, right. it is incredibly <laughs> overloaded. So this is part of the problem. Even though we have a brand new, beautiful uh, call center technology system, that allows us to set up a phone rep anywhere in the world with vo voice over internet, mm -hmm. we still have problems because there's not enough people to take the load. That's right. I mean, and there's a lot of exciting things about the new call system itself. Honestly, the old system we know was outdated and it needed to be replaced, repaired. But the way these new systems can integrate with something like 4.0, where that data can be shared and, and transferred and we can update uh, situations on the fly, there's all sorts of things that, that are possibilities in the future. You know, we've got a new website, we've got 4.0, um, we've got this enhanced customer care center. Well, what if in the future there's a chat box so that you can talk to some rep directly while you're browsing or trying to figure out a records issue uh, within your own personal instance of the website so this is a great example where we could walk alongside somebody and, and help them through this process and rather than leaving you on an island feeling alone 
or having to call and speak to five people on three phone calls and then having to mail in a document. Let's try to avoid that because it, in the end of the day, it's gonna save you time over your lunch break, it sounds like, 10 to two. Um, and we really wanna alleviate a lot of those pressures. Now that's 10 to two Amarillo time. Uh -oh. But we have a lot of people on European time. You know, we've got a lot of people on East Coast, West Coast time, a lot of people on Australian time. So the other thing about this new technology in our phone system, being a voice over internet, we can actually set up call center in anywhere in the world. If we want to go to Panama City and set up a call rep for Latin America, we can do that. That's if we awesome. want to go to Belgium and set up a call rep for Europe, we can do that. So, you know, rather than a company that's eight to five central time, mm -hmm. We'll have the ability to set up those systems where we can go outside of the eight to five time. It's so exciting because you're starting to talk about growing the organization just by having the ability for someone to access it that couldn't access it before. Um, whenever Base 22 gets to do more languages for a client, we get so excited because that means that they're thinking about reaching more people and they're thinking about what this future growth looks like. And I know when our polling questions, we're looking at those and, and member acquisition is on there. Uh, and it's important. Everybody wants more people to be a part of their group. Uh, and this is a, such a great one to be a part of. So I, I look at any time we add a language or, or functionality of that sort is, is such a huge benefit and something that we shouldn't take for granted, especially as kind of this process continues to move forward throughout 2019 here. Absolutely. So very cool. Absolutely. So we, we've touched on this a little bit, and I, I get really excited about this um, for, for a lot of different reasons, but member dashboards. Got a few screenshots here we want to walk through, but as we do, um, what's so unique about the member dashboards is how they were um, kind of constructed and thought up. You had steering committee with the exec executive committee, Craig, of course, and some of his team had this idea of more personalization for the members. Um, and so what ended up taking place was kind of a pretty intensive workshop, fun, intensive, uh, we can interchange those words, um, with Base22 and um, uh, AQHA stakeholders from uh, every division, pretty much, within the organization? Pretty much every division. In, in addition, uh, one of our EC members, Bush, Butch Wise, held a uh, workshop in Oklahoma City where That's we right. bought, brought thought leaders in and we looked at the data piece, what's important to folks who are selling a horse, exhibiting a horse, Right. Uh, looking for records, and so there's been multiple cases of, of getting some feedback for this design. Right, so we took all that feedback um, and we asked each stakeholder, hey, does, how does this work for your grouping of people? What's important to you? And, and we do something fun where it's the sticky note approach, and everybody gets a pad of sticky notes and say, give me 10 ideas. What means something to the folks within your group, and how can we make that a real thing for them when it comes time to deploy a dashboard? Um, and some of the results were out, outside the box because I had no idea what I was looking at at first. That's right. Uh, but then a lot of stuff was really similar because you find that a lot of these groups share some interest. But what we learned is that, yes, we're gonna, we need to have a centralized area, but there needs to be offshoots. There needs to be something different. So as we kind of look at these, you can see this is a specific uh, account here, and I can't, yeah, this is an individual person's account. Um, and so this is something that it could look like. You'll have your demographic information. You might have a scoring thing up there, something from showing, uh, maybe information pertaining to you. You could be able to um, subscribe to specific news feeds related to whatever your, your favorite topic is. And, and like Craig talked about, the site customizing itself for you, this is an area where you might get a little say over that yourself uh, without it being automated. Um, and so that's something we're certainly working towards. There's other sides to the dashboards as well. And um, there's things like the scoring, so you could know your entire stable, which is something we're talking about, like, out, I guess, putting together. Uh, but if you've got a lot of horses and you want to know what all their scores are combined or as a unit, or you just want to see how everybody's doing, this would be a great place for all that data to be pushed into one spot. Again, no picking up the phone, no hoping anything like that happens. One of the big things that, that we've noticed, how many of you go to All Breeds Pedigree to go look up a pedigree? Several of you, oh, I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, we're going to create our own All Breeds Pedigree. We have the original pedigree, right? So as part of this, you're going to be able to do searches. Um, you're going to be able to throw up the family tree, run those pedigrees, also find the records behind those pedigrees. So as, as another piece to that, we'll probably put the pedigree up to the front of this dashboard on all your horses. And so you can keep track of that. But uh, pedigree is important. We're a pedigree organization. We control, we hold the history and the heritage of the American Quarter Horse. So. And what's, what's fun is piggybacking on that. Here's actually a profile page for a horse. 
and we're talking about different ways that we can have this information interact with you, interact with other people, um, but it kind of gets fun. There's a place for your horse to have its thing, and if you're proud, hey, here's, here's the Facebook link. Check out what I did this weekend or check out how my, ho my horse showed, whatever that may be. Um, we're just trying to create a place where you can do that with the information where it's verifiable. Uh, it's got a certificate. It's all right. provable, so it's, it's really, really cool stuff. Um, I, I will say one thing that's been exciting for me working with AQHA is realizing the passion. Uh, and I know you and I've had a couple conversations about this because not being a part of the industry, uh, whenever I spoke to people, I, I kept coming back to them saying, my horse, or I love riding my horse, or I want to do something with my horse. And to me, it just really spoke volumes about the passion everybody has. So it's been fun for, for Base 22 to get to watch that passion and really feed off of it in, a, in an exciting way that we don't get all the time. Um, not every engagement is fun and full of passion. Sometimes it's, it's more grit and grind and hoping that you get to the end of it sooner than you have. Um, and this is one where we get excited because there's things like this. It's a profile for a horse. That's that's just cool. That's right. That's right. And, you know, we're looking at other things, and, and, and as part of our marketing and membership committee weekend work, um, we're going to be talking about tiering a membership. And, you know, can we create different hierarchies of service, maybe at different price points, uh, for tiers? Yeah. So maybe a, a tier one is a transactional breeder or transactional exhibitor. You're doing business with us every month. Uh, you want access to infinite number of records. Uh, you want these different benefits. You might want some sort of concierge service. Uh, that might be at a different level. Yeah. And then we might have lifestyle members that just want to be a part of the association. Sure. That's 12, 15, 20 bucks, whatever that is. You right. Know? Just as they can get the updates, they can be a part of the group. Um, think of it like a Costco membership. There's different tiers. You pay for a little more access, a little more benefit. Uh, but there's a lot more fun stuff that, that we can dream up here uh, than just 2% off milk at Costco. So we, we want to make sure to kind of incorporate those things. I think our next topic kind of gets into that as well a little bit, which is Robin Glenn pedigrees. So Craig, why don't you talk to us a little bit about the history of it? Because I think people understanding, if they don't already, some of the data behind it and sure. how far back it goes, it'll be important. Well, I have to give credit to Miss Robin Glenn, who's in the back of the room here. But this lady has spent 40 years of her life tracking the performance of, of performance horses. Okay, and so as AQH, we, AQHA tracks points, right, for, for AQHA shows, well, she's been tracking NCHA, NRHA, NRCHA, uh, and in recent years, uh, barrel racing. And so we have an enormous amount of information. Robin Glenn Pedigree is a wholly owned subsidiary of the AQHA. And so what we're trying to do is using all of the data that Robin has collected over the years, combined with the AQHA points data, you know, building a combined pedigree for you as a horse owner. And so you're going to be able to have, you know, those sets of records available to you uh, in report form for your horses. Today we charge, uh, if you want a record on a specific stallion or mare, uh, we charge you for that. Uh, there's a different fee for the different kinds of reports. Robin's put together a nicking report that shows what does this stallion do on these stallions' mares in terms of performance. And so you can buy a nicking report. Well, down the road, it may be different. Maybe we sell you a subscription uh, through some sort of concierge membership program, and you're not buying just one record at a time. Maybe we build that in to part of that uh, top tier membership, and we, we provide that service car blanche. I mean, you can go search anything you want to search. And so subscription-based uh, marketing is really growing when you think about Netflix. Absolutely. When you think about Amazon. Hulu, all of them. Hulu, all of them, you pay a subscription, a monthly, and you have I unlimited get my razors through a subscription right now. So whenever I shave, it's from a subscription box. Are you one of those guys? I'm one of those guys. All right. Yeah. Good deal. I mean, I've kind of missed a little, but, you know, <laughs> that's my fault. Not theirs. But there's a lot of exciting stuff that's going to come from this. Um, and that's just one side of uh, RGP, which that's I've right. become fond of saying lately. Uh, it's also things like AQH Stallions. Q Stallion, new product. It's pretty cool. Brand new product. So... This is a real-time uh, marketing promotion advertisement on a stallion that's going to sit on the AQHA website. And so what its capabilities are is it goes in and it finds all of the information off of Robin's database, all of the AQHA points, and it real-time populates that horse's record. And so we are currently out there today selling Q Stallion to stallion owners 
on a subscription-based platform. So that means that that horse is going to sit out there year-round, and every time there's an update, it is automated. So that, uh, that record is automated in real time. So that's where people are going to go find uh, where their breeding program is going to come from. Okay, And so we are really excited about that. Um, I'm sure there'll be some special deals where you can run a run a Q stallion, AQHA stallion on the website, plus some sort of magazine advertisement that goes along with it. But but uh, this is the first time in history where we're going to find real time data on a stallion updated, where anybody in the public can go find it. Yeah, it's really exciting. The other thing that we wanted to bring up um, is Catalog Builder because I thought this was an important thing to discuss and just, just kind of its capabilities and what that's going to mean. And Robin really ought to be up here telling this because this, this is a really, really interesting story. Um, I don't know how many days, hours, years, Robin, you've spent building catalogs the old-fashioned way where you have to go out, look up the data, pick it off, build a page. You're currently doing that for all of our racing industry. Um, she and her tech people actually built a product that will automate the writing of a paragraph for a cell catalog. I mean, awesome. before you had to type that thing out, mm -hmm. you had to go, all right, which is the most important information? You type that out. Now she has built analogs that will absolutely pick the most important information and write the paragraph for you. And so that's going to save time. And we've rolled out the ranching catalog. Um, and so we're hopeful that the ranching industry will take a look at this. It's going to save folks a lot of time. And we're working on the racing side of that that we hope to get out this summer before the big fall sell season. Yep. Fingers there, crossed. There's also the uh, coordination of like the RGP app that'll have some of this information on it That's as right. well. And again, it's about putting the information in your pocket with you everywhere you go. Um, if you're at a, at a show over a weekend, you didn't bring your laptop, it's gonna be great to have this kind of thing with you wherever you are. That's right. Um, and RGP is just one really exciting place. You know, we've talked about data a lot and that it, word's probably getting pretty annoying, but when you think about the amount of records that came from RGP and that effort over time, it's, it's really astounding. And so bringing that into the 4.0 world and, and trying to figure out how that's all gonna play together uh, has been a challenging, but uh, I would say rewarding experience. Um, and you know we're just talking about things like here's a tiered membership or here's potential benefits for you it's kind of endless the amount of things that could happen now that all of these things are under one roof one single sign-on where it's simple for you roof um, and I, I know we're excited to explore all those things so well let's recap for a second we've Sounds talked good. digital transformation and, and what that looks like and then how we're trying to deploy it we've discussed the website and some some issues but obviously some some really great new features that are coming mm. there uh, we've gone through 4.0 and how it kind of is that spinal cord running the show um, and, and it's thankfully built on such great technology that it's not going anywhere it's just simply going to be a constant presence and it won't need to be updated and replaced uh, we've gone to enhanced customer care a little abbreviated but I know there's a lot more exciting stuff coming there as well to, to help out the membership um, and then I guess we hit on dashboards and RGP so uh, we're really excited about a lot of these things and, and I know it's not it's not the end it's actually really the beginning here no and, and we're cleaning up right we've mm -hmm. got some sustainable sustainability time frame here where we're going to try to clean up some of the glitches mm -hmm. in the system that we just launched but I think that the message here is ad hoc can be on any device. If you want to do business with AQHA, it can be on your phone, it can be on your laptop. If you, if you want to do it by paper, we're going we're gonna to accept that too. You know, not everybody wants to be on their phone or on their, on their computer, and they're not, not everybody's comfortable. Though but we're going to digitize it. But we're going to digitize it. <laughs> It'll still That's be, right. after the paper, it's still going to become a record. That's right. That's right. We Second thing is anytime. Mm -hmm. third, third is anywhere. That's right. So folks want to register a horse uh, in Belgium or in Germany or in Italy, they can do it. Mm -hmm. It might be one in the morning back home uh, at the office, but they're going to be able to do it right there uh, in real time. Yeah, for sure. So we've got some polling questions we want to walk through again so that the next time that Craig gets up here with or without me, um, he'll be able to talk back through some of the things that we'd asked you about in previous years. Um, do we have the polling devices? Does everybody have them already? Oh, wonderful. There we go. I yep. missed that. So. Um, as we go through these, we'll talk a little bit about it, but this first question is, would you like to see an improved and expanded marketplace on the website, uh, maybe including sponsors items or other equestrian items? Think about it like if you've got a sponsor's discount already, what if that discount and that item were already baked into AQHA.com and, and you could get it kind of at a one-stop shop? 
So take a second and, and hit a response button for me, but A is yes, I would like using the marketplace like that. No, I already purchased elsewhere. And then the last option is maybe it depends. So a lot of folks would like to continue using it and then a lot of maybes and then just a few no's. So this is exciting because it's going to inform us next year as we kind of walk through some of these things and throughout all of 2019. Because uh, like we said, the website's going to continue to evolve. What types of incentives might encourage you to use a marketplace? Um, and this could be the pricing, uh, rewards points, free shipping, one-stop shopping for purchases like from a sponsor or really all of the above. Are any of these things enticing to you? Okay, everybody wants it. Great. Craig, we know what we're doing next. <laughs> okay, so our corporate sponsors who are in the room, they're going to like this. Yeah. Because they actually want to try to find ways to be able to deliver to you, to your doorstep, um, products. So it may be a Zoetis vaccine. It might be, um, I'm not going to say a set of tires, but maybe a set of tires. But uh, maybe it's some John Deere tractor. Tractor to your door. Oh, I like that. Yeah, we just pull up with a one. semi, dump it out in your yard, Barb. That would be great. Maybe a new trailer. A trailer could be could awesome. be Wranglers, could be boots, could be a pair of Wranglers, could be water hoses. We don't know, <laughs> but we know that people want access to this beautiful population of members. And I'll say that uh, that so far had the most responses, so clearly yep. everybody's interested. There you go. Great. Okay, so if you were able to purchase items from AQHA, corporate partners via the website, what types of items uh, would you be interested in purchasing? And, and can we, Lauren, does this work? Can they select everything that applies through the thing? It's me. Well, just pick your favorite. <laughs> Okay, so horse health items. Okay, first thing you mentioned, that's great. Uh, apparel and tack and equipment. This is, this is looking really nice. This is going to help inform a lot of decisions. So when buying horses, would a horse for sale section uh, with access to pedigrees and other records be of interest? So essentially a, a horse classified equine. That's right, horse classified. classified. Awesome. Well, that's that, helpful. There you go. All right. There you go. I know what we're working on. Yep. Which of the following benefits would you be willing to add to your membership for a fee? This is that tiered membership. We've got options to give back in some ways, and if there's places we can focus first, we'd like to figure out what that is. Unlimited records access. That's what we've been talking about. Hey, Robin. Look at there. <laughs> Our idea may just come to fruition. That's right. There you go. That's right. Which of the following would you find the most value in? Access to real-time updates of points, money earned, and standings, online show entry, text messaging regarding goes, bubbles, etc., or show management real-time validation of membership status and levels. All, all right. four of those look good to me. Yeah. A lot of pain points fixed in, the, in, in all of those. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. I think we've only got one or two more here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Access to real time. Again, everybody wants to know what's going on. We're going to work on that. So which of these additions to customer care would you find helpful? We talked about customer care a little bit earlier. Um, there's a lot of options for growth down the line, um, and there's different components that could be added in. And we're trying to figure out what would be most important. So you know, if you're on Amazon and you've got a problem, you might hit online chat. You might do a phone call um, or, or whatever that may be. And with that, that was the end of everything we had going. But what we wanted to do now is open it up to questions. We've talked about a lot of different topics. Um, and I will actually hand this mic off so somebody can kind of walk around down there. Um, but we do want to ask questions, and we'll hang out up here. Stay right there. I'm going to stay here. I'll yeah. go down yeah. as well. So does anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about? You want to do it? Hello, I'm Kath Plumer. I'm on the Recreational Committee. Uh, you're doing a lot of stuff for the show committee people, but we'd like to know what you're doing for the recreational people to log in their hours and how we're going to continue that. You took away the app that you had generated for us, and now we'd like to know what's going to happen. There you go. So on the new website, mm -hmm. there's a place where you could go log your hours. Um, so we, we still have the app. We're going we're to see if we can integrate the app with the website, but for now we have a place for, for uh, recreational writing where you can go in, log your hours, and then we'll also give you a read of what those hours are. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Are your dashboards, are they live or are those prototypes that you're building toward? They're not live yet. That's a good question. Those are prototypes that are designed. Um, we're going to probably wind up spending the next three to five months tying that into that, that database. 
so we can get those live feeds out there. That's going to take a little time. Um, you know, our first first go right now with 4.0 just launching is get it stabilized, work the work the bugs out. Yep. But I think that right there is, is a game changer. You know, I think I, I hope y'all agree. I mean, that's that's to me most of the calls that we get in uh, have to do with the things that we're trying to get out on that dashboard. And I think we're also looking at how we can make improvements on dashboards. So we'll probably have a phase one dashboard rollout maybe this summer, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll start talking about what else do you want to put on there. Yeah, and, and look at the dashboards like an umbrella term. It's going to encompass a lot of different things. I mean, we, we jokingly say dashboard. Most people think that that means numbers or, or whatever, but we're going to pipe in a lot of information there and think of it more like a profile for just you, for everything that you need. Um, and honestly, every time we get to put dashboards in place, we just find that there's a lot of value that everybody gets out of them because you get to make it your own, and then and you're seeing what you need to see and not what somebody in a different uh, realm needs to see at all. So. Good question. Very exciting description. Timeline. You mentioned the dashboards looking over targeting summer. There are other features that you showcased yeah. in this presentation. So could you give us a timeline let's or go an through, approximation of it? Let's go through the list of things that are available today, provided you can get signed on. Some of you are having trouble getting signed on to the new website. So uh, paying online, you know, you're just going to be able to enter your credit card, you're going to be able to pay that invoice online today. Uh, a record of your invoices will be stored. So say you're a trainer and at the end of the year um, you want to print all of those invoices off for tax purposes or what have you, it'll store those for you. That's, that's in the system today. Um, if you want to DNA a foal uh, and you don't want to call in and wait for the, the, paper, you know, the paper trail to, to be mailed to you, today you can download a DNA kit. It's just a one pager. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I'm missing. There's uh, what from customer care is already in place. I'm trying much. to think. There's other. There's other th online registration, online transfer. Yeah. Uh, the biggies. You know, that's that's in the user site. So you'll be able to do that uh, today immediately. Um, I know I'm missing missing some things. There's there's FAQs on the front page of the website that will share with you all of the the details of the things that will be made available to you today. Um, and, I'm, and I'm certain that, you know, we're going to make improvements on those as well as we go down. Now, the dashboard, where all that information is stored, um, it, it's probably going to be mid-late summer before we can really get to that and, and get it up and rolling. And, and one thing, since we're bringing some of this information together, um, in the future, you might get the update of when everything is going to be deployed through an automated email, because now we know that you want to know that. You've said, hey, keep me up to date. So we're kind of working on those things as well. And I know later on uh, throughout convention, you're going to hear a little bit more about some of the marketing efforts that are taking place, not necessarily the large digital projects, but how that could translate directly to you learning simply. Yeah. Is the status of um, pending paperwork, is that currently available? Uh, yes, so uh, we had about 38,000 pending transactions in the old system. Uh, we started moving that over Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We moved all of those over into the 4.0 system. So as far as I know, if you have an email address, uh, they started shooting emails to you to talk about those pendings. Um, so I believe and I'll have to talk to Jody Solomon about that. Um, I believe that they are available in your account, but Ann, I, before I get too far down the road on that, I need to check to see if it's functioning. Um, Craig. There's Tammy, yeah. So the information as we start processing it will start displaying out there. Some of it will start displaying this week, even without the email. If we've generated correspondence, you're gonna be able to go out and view it online and start answering any correspondence that we have out so, there. So, Tim, you're saying those 38,000 pending, they can go find? Not, not all of them yet. They're, they okay. had to push them first, and now they've started ordering the correspondence so you can see it in the system. Okay. And so that, that started about Wednesday of this week, and so things should start cropping in there where you'll be able to view them and, and get them. So maybe over a, a couple of week period, we could start mm -hmm. to populate that. Absolutely. Uh, where they can go find that on their, on their user site. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Ann, what was that again? So I'm going to have Tammy speak to this a little bit. Uh, uh, part of the problem we've had is people forgot their username and password. So if you're like me, 
uh, where you put your username and password in three years ago and then didn't write it down, then, then you're gonna, I'm going to have a problem, right? So, Tammy, uh, we've had a number of those calls this week. We have had a number of calls, and what, what I've learned on the, the few that I've talked to is we've all saved them. So it was, the computer was keeping it for us, so we forgot what it was. A lot of people have thought it was their email address, but really it was your username that may be attached to your, your email address. So there are options for you to reset that or to retrieve it, or you can call us and we'll walk you through it. And if you're here and, and I'm standing around, holler at me and I'll help you get started on it as well. Um, because it's a pretty simple process once we get going and, and then you have access to everything. Absolutely. Username is typically, uh, maybe helpful if you had an example on there, like is that your uh, ID number, is it your QLX980 so, or whatever. Okay. Or so my personal one, just to give you an example, is Canada01. It doesn't have anything to do with my ID number. It doesn't have anything to do with my email address. It's just something that I'm used to using for other accounts. And I think a lot of people have set that up when you first set up your profile. And once you save it, you just forget about it because it's always there. And so you'll be able to do the same here on this new website once we get it set up in there for you. But, and we can help look that up for you. If you give us a call, we, ha we have the ability to, to just look up that username for you. And then you remember your password usually once you get that username triggered. But if we don't, if we don't remember it, we can call in, right? Yes, sir. Or there's also some YouTube tutorials. If you want to take the time and watch the YouTube tutorial, it will show you how to correct that. It will show you how to ask for a username, correct? Yes, it does. And it's going to ask you what your secret, secret questions are so we know who you are. And we're giving that information only to you. And um, the first question we already had stored in our database because you had to use that on the old system. That carried over. Your username and password from the old system also carried over. Um, what we have found is since it's a new, new platform, it just didn't save it for you. But if you input it again, it, it will be there. Um, there is a button when you go to log in that says, I forgot my username. So click on that. It's going to ask you some personal questions so we know who you are. And then it's going to email it to you so you can get started. I've, I've had a couple of calls this week, Tammy, for folks who are building catalogs for their sale and they didn't remember the answer to the question. So Correct. if I can't remember my username, if I don't remember my password, and I don't remember the answer to the question you asked me, I'm gonna have to make a phone call. You give us a call. Right, so. We're gonna have that for you and help get you That's through. right. Perfect. Any other questions? One and two should show up. It should now. Right. Yes, ma'am. We, we had a glitch early. I've had a couple clients that have asked about the security of putting their um, membership, um, not their membership, but their credit card in there. And they're a little bit worried about doing that. Yeah, so. Great uh, question. Rest at ease. Um, the, the site is perfectly secured with SSL certificates, uh, and, and we make sure that through that single sign-on, through the back end, that everything is nice and tight. It's the same type of security certificates that a, a major online retailer would have to use, uh, and we use the same type of authorization techniques. So your stuff is perfectly safe, but I do understand the concern, and that was one of our top priorities. We deal with a lot of uh, folks in that commerce world or folks that need to deal with uh, payment issues, and, and so we've certainly really figured out how to make sure that your stuff's secure. That's true on the internal side as well. There you go. Um, we don't keep your complete credit card. So mm -hmm. once it's input into the system, there, there's a method with the credit card company that turns that into a token. So we don't even have access to it to be able to put it at risk for you. Yeah, that's a good one to put in the FAQ for sure. Well, I, I think we're wrapping up, unless anybody's got another question uh, here, and otherwise we can take a break, and I, I think the cocktail hour is coming. Yep, absolutely. Before we, before we leave, though, um, there's some special people that, that I'd like to recognize. Um, Tammy Canada, for one, has been working seven days a week, 12 to 16-hour days since about January 1st, maybe before that, actually. Christmas. So. <clears throat> absolutely. And... 
she has a team of people back in Amarillo that are has bloodshot eyes and have been working late nights um, to get this thing rolling. And I'm telling you, I couldn't be prouder of the work they're doing, you know, for us, for you. And I'm extremely proud. We also have uh, Katie Reynolds here, who uh, has been working with uh, JC in the in the youth program. But because we need a little help in the new call center, last summer I just tapped her on the shoulder and said, "Hey, can you help us run this new call center?" And so we threw her into the fire. And uh, so she's been training new call reps been trying to work our way through this data-driven call center. Um, and so again, we put people on the line for 12, 14 hour days. Katie, great job. We appreciate you too so much. Um, so there's a whole lot of folks involved in it. And uh, last but not least, it's our executive committee. Uh, the executive committee challenged us uh, last year to one, let's get fiscally responsible, let's get financially sustainable, and let's also get this technology off the ground to take care of our people. Um, and so those folks who are here, I think I saw Dr. Scott Myers and uh, I don't know if Butch or uh, Dr. Hurd's here uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, there's right there Stan Weaver, going to be our upcoming president. Norm, Norm Luba. Uh, man, they've been great partners uh, in moving this uh, big rudder uh, over the last uh, couple of years. So gentlemen, thank you. We appreciate you. Uh, with that, um, we're going to go into our next phase here, right?